Have you ever wondered why people hate the Star Wars prequel trilogy more than the sequel trilogy? Or why, despite some pretty incredible advances, the visual effects were so heavily criticised? Well, we think the Star Wars films, at least the prequels, should have avoided using digital effects altogether. And this is why. Firstly, practical effects are limited to the physical world and therefore they force filmmakers to work within their constraints. For example, in the original trilogy, you couldn't put a tremendous number of ships in one shot because each one had to be a detailed miniature model that was filmed in front of a blue screen by a motion control camera. Then each motion control shot had to be reprinted using an optical printer and filters to change the blue screen background into a black background to create something called a foreground mat. This foreground mat, when combined with the original shot, isolated the model so that it could be projected along with all the other model shots into the optical printer and composited into the final shot. You also couldn't have extended shots of actors riding imaginary beasts because the only way to achieve this was by building miniature puppets and animating them frame by frame, a process known as stop motion animation, which could easily take up to an hour to produce just one second of stop motion film. This meant that the original trilogy's screenplay had to be written within the confines of what was physically and economically possible to produce using visual effects. Nowadays, almost anything you can imagine, no matter how crazy, can be achieved using digital effects. If you want an absolutely insane number of ships in the sky, firing laser cannons and exploding, you've got them. And you want an army to be riding space horses on the top of one of those ships, you got them too. But bigger isn't always better, especially when concerning visual effects. And with nothing to limit the imagination, things can go from believable to ridiculous very quickly. The second reason is that practical effects are real and digital effects only look real. The original trilogy has its own unique look and feel. The puppets, miniatures and matte paintings may seem dated now, but because they are real things in front of the camera as an audience, we can still accept them as real even though they aren't completely convincing. Just like stop motion animation may seem jerky and crude, but because we know it's a real model being manipulated, it doesn't feel fake. Digital effects can look a lot more realistic than practical effects, but if they are just slightly off, if the lighting is a little wrong, if the physics aren't quite right, the eye lines don't line up, or the interactions with the actors are unconvincing, the whole illusion is completely broken. And as an audience, we feel cheated and so we disconnect. But with practical effects, it's different. Take Luke's land speeder, for example. This effect was achieved using two different land speeders. One was mounted on a rotating crane arm and the other was mounted on a small three-wheeler car. They then mounted mirrors underneath to conceal the wheels and reflect the desert sand back at the camera. But you notice over the rough desert terrain that it's bouncing on its wheels even if you can't see them. And when on the crane arm, even with the camera movement, you can tell the car is rotating rather than just going forward. But even though these things break the illusion, we know they are real and so don't feel cheated and therefore remain connected. The final and perhaps most interesting reason is the visual timeline. When you look back through behind the scenes footage of Star Wars, you can see a definite difference between then and now. Technology has advanced, images are clearer and more defined, colours are more vibrant and lighting is more dynamic. As we mentioned before, due to the technology and practical effects available at the time, the original trilogy has its own characteristic look and feel, much like an old home video camera recording or other classic films like Mary Poppins or E.T. If I show you a video of back in the 70s or 80s, you would expect it to look older and grainier, not all new and shiny. Episodes 1, 2 and 3 supposedly happened before the original trilogy, so subconsciously you expect them to look older. And yet, thanks to advances in technology and digital effects, they look smooth, polished and futuristic. And this just doesn't follow the Star Wars visual timeline. And so the prequels feel detached from the Star Wars universe, as though they're not really part of the saga. The last three films combined more practical effects with digital effects, 
The look and feel of the practical effects tied them to the original trilogy and the smoother digital effects set them in the future. This meant they were more coherent with the Star Wars universe's visual timeline and therefore easier to accept as being part of it. So while the three prequels did wonders for the advancement of digital effects, the films themselves might well have been better off without them. What do you think? Let us know in the comments.